Lynn Cullen live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. I'm, I was just reading how I'd heard that they found out that hackers can attack these smart toilets. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, yeah, but what could they do? I, I couldn't figure out what a hacker would do with a toilet. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Because these are toilets that automatically the lid opens, the lid closes, uh, you know, water does this, goes up, goes down, goes around. It does everything, everything but uh, make your breakfast. Uh, so it said they could, um, attackers could cause the unit to unexpectedly open or close. Or it could activate the bidet or air dry functions causing distress. Oh, my God. Evildoers can now turn your commode into a lid-clapping, maniacally flushing poltergeist nightmare. <laughs> but, of course, if you spend over $5,000 for a toilet, maybe you deserve to be punked, according to this. Hi, how you doing? It's good heavens, the 6th of August. And uh, it is a, another gloriously beautiful day at this point. I know there's showers in the forecast, but... Well, uh, Tuesdays is normally my sister visiting us day, but we just called Green Bay where she is, yes? And we're told that she's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, let sleeping Susans lie. That's what we're going to do. So, again, just you and me. And uh, in case you just wandered upon this, I'm uh, Lynn Cullen, Lynn Cullen. And uh, we've got about 59 minutes that we can spend together uh, talking about everything and anything. Uh, uh, clearly, the big news today <laughs> is the shocking news uh, that came out yesterday afternoon that the Washington Post, that uh, flagship newspaper uh, with a great history in many ways, uh, had been sold for a measly $250 million. And this just a day or two after we heard that the Boston Globe, which had been owned by the New York Times, had been sold for a mere $70 million uh, to, what, the owner of the Red Sox or something? So, uh, the fact that uh, the founder of Amazon.com uh, Mr. Bezos, Jeff Bezos, has now become the owner of the Washington Post, uh, is, I, I mean, just hang on to your hats, because uh, there'll be more of, uh, of the same. The newspaper business is in a tailspin, and it's in a tailspin, <laughs> this is the ironic part of Jeff Bezos buying the Post, right, that it's in a tailspin because of the 
internet because of technology and the changes it has wrought. So as Jeff Bezos and his uh, Amazon.com pretty much decimated the publishing industry. Uh, remember when you used to be able to go to bookstores? Where there, are, where there pretty much aren't any bookstores anymore because of, well, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. So you, he's, it's easy to hate the guy, but he's, he's um, revolutionized retail in in a gazillion ways and there's again no no going back uh, I guess he saved the world a lot of bricks and mortar uh, as people very quickly consumers very quickly took to buying things online so talk to any writer any publisher and they'll just you know, moan and groan about the fact that it's almost impossible to make any money now writing a book. It is almost impossible. And there again, the what Bezos wrought. And yet, interestingly enough, I mean, I have read already about 800, it seems, uh, pieces on reaction to this purchase. And I would say most that I have read are positive or at least mildly hopeful. Uh, Jeff Bezos is looked on uh, not as um, a monster, but as a thoughtful and patient man. Uh, also a lover of the written word. And politically, he's, I've seen him described as a, a libertarian Democrat. He, uh, he gave a lot of money to, uh, to uh, gay rights organizations, I believe. He's a big supporter of Senator Patty Murray, who is a liberal Democrat. And so this is certainly better than having Rupert Murdoch by the Washington Post or the Koch brothers who are out trolling around for papers, by the way, and there's still some fear that they could uh, buy up the Los Angeles Times. So Generally speaking, I, I think in order for newspapers to survive, this is the way they're going to survive. They're going to survive by being uh, bought by very, very deep-pocketed people who, for some reason, are drawn to this arcane form of uh, communication and news gathering, and uh, who won't care if it doesn't make a lot of money because they have so much that they can afford to lose it. And it's been pointed out in a number of the articles that Bezos, uh, when he founded Amazon, uh, hung in there through year after year after year after year after year of losing a lot of money on it. It didn't turn a profit for a long time. Thus, I think the adjective that we're hearing all the time, patient. And there's hope that he, <clears throat> more than almost anybody else could, because he is and has proven to be a visionary, he has proven to be somebody who thinks outside of the box, that he, with his patience and his vision, will be just the right guy to maybe, maybe finally figure out what to do to make the transition for the newspaper business uh, into the Internet era. Um, obviously, I mean, I, he has been quoted as saying that uh, in an interview he did in Germany, I guess, not too long ago, he, he was quoted as saying he did not believe that there would be any newspapers uh, in 20 years. 
And I think that's sort of a, I think he's being kind to newspapers by giving it that long. Uh, so there's no doubt that newspapers will end up online, but how then you make money with them, how you support the kind of staff that can do the journalistic work, which is obviously at the heart, lest we forget, of what a newspaper's function and mission are. Um, well, let us hope. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Of all the people that could have bought it, I guess this one makes the most sense. Um, so I'm, I'm not upset. I'm actually, uh, I'll look forward to seeing what he does. And m even the, uh, the people who work at the Post seem to be, although still in a state of shock, uh, they do seem to be relatively uh, okay, I guess, with this. So who's going to buy the New York Times? You know what I've heard? I've heard that a guy named Bloomberg, who is soon to lose the job that he has loved and held for some time, namely the mayor of New York City, uh, that Bloomberg, with his <clears throat> extraordinarily deep pockets, and already in the news business because of, well, Bloomberg News and other little offshoots of, uh, of that empire, that Bloomberg buying the New York Times makes a lot of sense, too. And maybe, I don't know how you feel about that, a little less sanguine, perhaps, than Jeff Bezos. Is that how it's pronounced, Bezos? It, it sure looks that way, but you know, that's real close to that disgusting hairball I've got in my stomach. <laughs> so every time I see it, I think, Ugh! you know, you've heard of a Bezoar, B-E-Z-O-A-R, I think is how it's pronounced, Bezos. I wonder if Bezos ever had a Bezoar. It's like a human hairball. Most disgusting. Anyway, if anybody has any thoughts on that or toilets that make you breakfast, feel free, because um, I'm all by myself today, because Susan's in the... Uh, <gasps> dream Is that Susan? But she's not calling the right number. I know she's not. And you can't pick that up? I don't... Mm -mm. Well, can you shut it up? Let's see. Yeah. Huh? Wait. It stopped. It did. Well, all she has to do is look online and see that number right. to call in. She's, Why don't you text her? No, she's smart. If there's one thing we know, she's smart, and she's a, she's a, she loves to solve problems. So she'll, even if she's listening now, I ain't telling you the number, Susan. You figure it out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Okay? Oh, what else? What else? What else? Um, and speaking of papers, and specifically the New York Times, I don't know if you saw the Sunday piece, which... I could have spoken about yesterday, I guess, but I failed to do my usual rip. I don't have it with me. Um, they, it's a second in a series they're doing on the high cost of health care in the United States. And it's just, it's a jaw-dropping. I mean, it's not like you don't know that we're being ripped off royally. In, and we have the most screwed up health care system that could be devised. It, I mean, if it were devised, it was devised by, you know, like, I don't know, uh, nitwits on, uh, on PCP or something. I mean, it's, it makes zero sense. And every service, every item is outrageously inflated in price as it passes through a million different unnecessary middlemen. And uh, in Sunday's piece, they simply looked at the cost of a hip replacement, which is something that more and more Americans, as the boomers 
go into their dotage, more and more Americans will be having hip replacement surgery. The difference between having that surgery in the United States as opposed to, let's say, as this gentleman that they followed did, booking passage to Belgium and having it done there. Well, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think if I were to say that it was more than three times as much to do the surgery here as it would be if you picked up and went to Brussels. And the price to go and do it in Belgium also includes the airfare, the transatlantic trip, a hotel, all the stuff you would have to spend, every penny out of pocket. And then you see how it works on our end and why a device which by the way a hip replacement costs about $150 to manufacture is that Susan that's me Susan <laughs> did mother wake you up cuz I did not want you to be awakened well no actually my daughter woke me up and I went oh my god it's 911 <laughs> well I told you I thought you'd be jet lagged and you shouldn't have to do it so but here you are you? Well, that's okay. Here I am. Okay, here's Susan. You were in San Francisco yesterday? I was. So you're a little, yeah, you're a little, you're a little jet lagged. I, well, not, it wasn't so much that. It's that um, we were supposed to take off in San Francisco at noon. Well, this sounds like, I mean, listen, first of all, before you go any further, is that not how the story of air travel always begins with the always. words, but with I mean, words like, just... we were supposed to. Okay, go ahead. So, of course, we, I mean, we're, we're, in, uh, we're in rental cars, we're doing different things, you don't know. Oh, and there was a, there was a threatened BART, BART strike. The, oh, that's their, right, yeah, uh, their, their subway their system. Their public transportation right. system. So yeah, that, right. we had to be doubly careful to get to the airport on time <laughs> because maybe all of San Francisco was on the highway instead of mostly taking trains. And right. that was called off in the middle of the night, so right. that didn't happen. But um, we, all, we were at the airport two hours early anyway, and then our flight was delayed two hours. <laughs> and so um, we spent most of the day, <laughs> we were up at, at, uh, at 7 o'clock, so 5 o'clock central time and 4 o'clock in the morning your time. And uh, we didn't take off until yeah. 2 o'clock <clears throat> in the afternoon. Yeah. Well, you know, this is just the way it goes now. And well, but think, now wait a minute. I'll get to the good part of the story. Yeah, then we but got so we landed it. at at eight thirty. We are landing at, at at eight and back at our car by eight thirty. And then we're in Chicago, so we have to drive from Chicago. Susan, what? Nobody wants to hear other people's horrors. <laughs> well, don't you want to hear about the part where our brother kept us up until three o'clock in the morning? Uh, okay. We'll get to that part. Okay, so we got home, and it was midnight. We yeah. drove in, and, and our brother was so excited that he came in to Green Bay to see us, and, and then he and my husband were up. Oh, um, I get the picture. Yes. <clears throat> up uh, trading shots of, uh, of whiskey. Yes. Gotcha. Bill was here with several different kinds. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I didn't even, I did not know. Our brother was uh, in. Uh, our brother is here. Our brother, who are you know here, is here. Okay, and has your husband recovered, or is he still asleep? Well, um, it was because my my daughter called to see if we got here. That that I'm awake, and that uh, and Eric's awake. But I told him to go back to sleep. Good idea. But I, being a person who has a sense of duty and stuff... You stayed up with your husband while he was drinking himself into a stupor with our brother. Right, and then well, I got up this morning mind. because I went, oh my goodness. Right, oh, I... Yeah, but you die... Whatever, whatever, whatever you want. You want to stay? You sound relatively... Uh, what's the Latin term? Compus mentis? I am compus mentis. And I wasn't drinking single malt liquor, so I'm fine. Okay, 
All right. And single malt liquor is what, what kids who are underage drink and then they get really sick? No, 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 no. Sick, that's malt liquor and that tastes like beer. Yeah. Single malt liquor is scotch. Oh, okay. So that's what they were drinking. Right. Scotch. Gotcha. I thought whiskey. But isn't scotch whiskey? Well, it's called scotch whiskey, but it's a kind. It's the kind that's made in Scotland. Well, big friggin' deal. And, it's still whiskey. And then whiskey, there's blended whiskeys where they take more than one uh, kind and put them together. That would be like Dewar's, which our father drank. And then there's single malts, which are apparently harder to get to taste good because they only rely on one. One malt? Yeah. What's a malt? Uh, it's Malt is, has to be some kind of grain or, or hops or something. Uh, who knows? Here's the here's the BSer in the sister. Well, it's not hops because that's beer, but I have no idea. What's malt? I don't know. Well, it's, I'm just asking. Someone will look at. It's like a malted milk too. So that it's, well, or like malted milk balls. But malt is clearly. Wait a minute. It's something. Obviously, malt is something. Not to be, but I, isn't that interesting? I don't have a clue what that Here is. Here it is. Malt beverage is an American term. For both alcohol containing a non alcohol non alcoholic fermented beverage in which the primary ingredient is the grain or seed of the barley plant. And which has been allowed to spread sprout in a traditional way called malting slightly before it is processed. All there right, you know. okay. So it has to do with the barley yes. <clears throat> Didn't you have a dog named Barley? I did. <clears throat> Stupid. All my animals had stupid names. Barley. God, stupid. That's a good name. <clears throat> you think? Yeah. We were living on a farm. <coughs> that had something to do with it. Gosh. <coughs> What's the matter? Nothing. <coughs> Nothing. So, Susan. Yeah. So, I mean, the odds of you. Well, so while you were sitting in the... Um, on the plane and in the for a long time, I took it. You took in a lot of news. Uh oh. Yeah, but what, 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 your mother was whispering. <laughs> Susan, you sounded like one of the. You sounded your laugh sounded like one of Marge Simpson's sisters. I sound like one of well, Marge geez. Simpson's sisters. That's what I sound like. Oh my I, god! I sound like an old cackling smoker. Yeah. Yeah. It might, and I have a totally bass voice, and I can't even raise it anymore, but I think it has, has a lot to do with the fact that I artificially lowered my voice when I, was a, when I was a young attorney trying to seek respect. Well, I think it's important for women to get their voices down a little bit. I do. I do, too. And by the way, I was, ta- I was listening to, you know, one of the radio shows that we were listening to on our way in last night. And there was a very there. Oh, it was there was a writer for Sports Illustrated doing this story, and he was talking in that way that we were discussing last week. And I was going, it sounds so <clears throat> terrible when a man goes. And then, if that, you uh, are looking to find out this, then you could. But they you know, do. Now. But there are men and who talk why that way. Man talking like a. Yeah, a valley and he girl. was. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it in a, in in men now. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> well, yeah. I as I well the what we he, what we were it talking was interesting about is with what he was talking about too. He got he was talking about what makes great athletes great athletes, and you know we all assume that it's you know a combination of just <clears throat> genetically highly tuned you know prowess and quick reaction time and strength and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out that it's not any of those things. It's, it's mostly how, it's mostly genetics and then a lot of real hard work. And he, and he proved it by getting a woman softball player who was very, a woman softball pitcher who was really good and putting her up, having her pitch to people like Alfred Pujols. Mm-hmm. You know, all the best hitters. Mm-hmm. And she was terrified. She thought they were going to kill her. You know, they would hit the ball right back at her, and she, she would die. And it turns out none of them could hit her. They could not connect with her balls. Wow. <laughs> and, and I mean, she, 
he said he said they they were whiffing so bad that one of them actually went around in a circle like a cartoon, <laughs> like a corkscrew into the ground. Right, right. just just, just <clears throat> and wow. and it was because it turns out that baseball players, you know, that the good hitters are. It's not the reaction time. It's not you know. It's the fact that they react to imperceptible tells of the pitcher. The Sit of his shoulders, blah, 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 and they don't even know that they're reading these tells. But you put this strange woman who's soft, you know, who's using a softball and pitching underhand, and her body language is totally different, and there was nothing to read, and none of them could hit her. It had nothing to do with watching the ball or any of that. It's <laughs> still shocking that they couldn't hit it. Yeah, it was a very interesting thing, except for the fact that he was talking like this. Like this? Oh, God, that's unfortunate. It really is. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, here's what we're going to do. Okay. Now that we have Susan in tow, um, and please tell our mom to stop whispering well, to you. Well, she needed me to understand that she was going to go swimming. Okay, but <laughs> you have to tell her that you're doing a program now. and Right? I did. Okay. I Didn't you hear me go, shh? No, oh, God. Okay, fine. We're um, we're coming up on our first break. Wait, says w- Jess. Just wait, one Just wait one second. We're coming up on that old first break. <laughs> well, this is a first. What happened? Well, I don't. Do you want to call me back so that other people can call? They can call, they can't can they? Call in. Can they? Yeah, they still can. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, we're fine. And uh, that first number you called was what? It was, I just called back the number that you called me on. Oh. Yeah, we can't. But we can't pick that one up for some reason. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take a (laughs) Don't ask. (laughs) Telling you tin cans and chewing gum and string. That's how, that's how we roll. We're rolling right into a commercial. We'll be right back. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. This week, great deals on gift cards to Seba, Cadillac Ranch, and Luke Woolies. Supplies are limited. BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BergBargains.com. Hey, Billy, want to go to the state fair? Yeah! Well, you can't. <gasps> Well, you see, Billy, when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have done with it. But now your parents are becoming energy efficient. They could save hundreds of dollars a year and take you to the fair next year. I want to go now. I know you do. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Now it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. All righty, all righty, all righty, we are back. Um, uh, we were speaking before about uh, the uh, purchase by Jeff Bezos of the... <laughs> right, of the Washington Post. Yeah, and um, there was a great uh, headline in Salon in one of their pieces on it, and it is this, the iceberg just rescued the Titanic. I can't believe it. You can't believe what? That, that I mean that they, that, I mean they, I feel like they galloped in on a white shining horse and yeah, that's what every, somebody else from doing it. I know, but I don't think that's, I, the thing is, is that uh, it was uh, Donald Graham, the owner, the previous owner, who approached Bezos. So he sought out, I mean, it was, it, again, the Graham family doing it right uh, finding the right fit. And everybody seems to be thinking that, yeah, the guy who actually, by his, uh, you know, creation of Amazon.com, uh, started the decline and fall of newspapers <laughs> is now thus the uh, iceberg rescuing the Titanic. Um but a lot of people are saying that he this might be the guy to figure out how to bring newspapers into 
this new age. To keep them alive. Yeah. But again, he, he it also is possible that he won't be able to figure it out. I mean, just because somebody had one extraordinary idea doesn't mean they're going to have two. An awful lot of smart cookies have been trying to figure out how to make money off a newspaper once it's online. See, I was hoping that the, they weren't trying to make money, that they were just willing to subsidize. Well, and here's the thing, too. That's the other reason. I mean, he got it for uh, for chump change. Well, uh, they paid they paid well over a billion, and, and he paid 300 and some million or something? No, 250. That's all. Actually, 250 million. And he's worth over 20, uh, he's worth over 23 billion. So that's just a little... I mean, he it's wouldn't even jump change. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. And it's been pointed out that Amazon did not make a profit for seven years, and he was quite willing to wait. And so his patience and his ability to not have to make money uh, is all of that just seems like really good, really good. Well, you know, I. And he is, I mean, this is his model or their model, his and his wife's model of, it's, it, you know, Bill Gates chose to do one thing with his fortune, and, and he really is. I mean, I, I saw a report on him I, somewhere in here, and they were talking about how, you know, at a certain point you, you need to figure out what you do with all this money and how you turn it That's back. Right. To That's the right. world, so right. I mean, they are—they're they, doing it, and they're, they're of an age. It. They're of an age now to do, it. and and the fact is, these are Bezos and and um, who did you just say Gates and yeah. um, and Allen and all these gazillionaires now um, are not are exactly like uh, Carnegie and you know Frick and all those people of the industrial age and many of them did turn it you know like Carnegie did turn it around and and and, and endow uh, a lot of stuff um, so we'll see what these guys uh, are able to do here's something interesting that Bezos said to the Washington Post staff in a um, an email or a letter that was distributed to the staff, he said, and I, I really like this, he says, the Internet is transforming almost every element of the news business, shortening news cycles, eroding long, reliable revenue sources, and enabling new kinds of competition, some of which bear little or no news-gathering costs. He's pointing out there what, you know, what drives newspaper people crazy. Newspapers pay a bunch of people to find the news, to investigate, to gather. And, well, that's correct. They used to. Well, they still do. They still do, but they can't do as much because they can't afford to as much. Yeah, I mean, every major but, newspapers each maintained international right. bureaus. But these people that then pick up their reporting and run with it, they have not produced anything. They're just so he's saying that they newspapers are now facing this competition, and from a lot of competitors who bear little or no news-gathering costs. They just rip off what... As a matter of fact, working in television, I can tell you. I mean, I've spent a career ripping off newspapers, if you think about it. Well, of course. But now newspapers rip each other off. So yeah. and if I'm in St. Louis and the Post-Dispatch has, <laughs> instead of an army of reporters reporting nationally and internationally from their own sources... I'm just reading pickup articles from the AP and the New York Times. Right, Park. right, exactly. And if you look at our po uh, Post it's Gazette, the same thing. it's um, uh, it's New York Times, AP, and then some local reporting. But uh, yeah, so here uh, he also says there is no map, and charting a path ahead will not be easy. We will need to invent which means we will need to experiment. I like that. He's going to 
He's going to think outside the box and try new things. And he's got a, a damn fine staff there to, to work with. And, I mean, so we'll see. It's difficult, though, because those of us that like the newspaper don't, we don't, we, not only do we not want it to be new and different, we want it to, to try and go back to the way it was. But it won't. And, and, That's and, gone. The, and the other people don't read newspapers. You know, they've already been trained out of it. So, so it's the news, really a no. very difficult thing. It's for people that well, can't pr- imagine starting their day without having a physical paper in their hands to learn what happened. Well, that's exactly what Chuck has written. Uh, technology is my business, he's written, but there's nothing I enjoy more than my newspaper in one hand and a pot of coffee in the other on a lazy Sunday morning. But I think that is going away. And there's not no unless maybe a paper is it possible that they could just put out a Sunday paper? I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, how many people know. do you know that just get the Sunday Times? Yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But Bezos himself uh, said um, in an earlier interview before this news was he he said he does not think newspapers will survive uh, 20 years from now. There won't be what we know of as a newspaper. It's not going to be Probably not. something you hold in your hand. So that's it. Um, Henry writes, one of Amazon's most interesting product offerings is self-publishing. Just write a book, upload it to Amazon, choose a cover, <laughs> and Amazon will put that book up for sale. As your book is ordered, they will make the book one book at a time. Well, and, they, yes, that is, and ship that's it. how. That's the trick behind all of these people who, uh, you know, the publishing business going into the same tailspin because now no yeah. one needs a publisher. No one needs a publisher. And, and and the reason that that can happen is that no one any longer has to front the cost of books up front. Right. 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 So. Henry writes, this is really amazing, and it's the kind of thinking that must come to the rescue of our newspapers. So we'll see. Poor Bezos. He's got a lot of, um, you know, he might have thought that there'd be this hue and cry. Oh, no, the Washington Post. Oh, no. And everybody's now looking like, yeah, he's he's Well, when you, I mean, when you, you know, you know who's trying to... Who's going in after the the Chicago Tribune and the Boston Globe the Koch and the brothers, the Koch and the LA Times? You know, I mean, it's frightening. That's right. And so, of all the people in the world who can buy you up, this one's a good one. Um, and you just got to wonder with the Times jettisoning the Boston Globe the other day, uh, and that selling for seventy million. You, you got to wonder when's the Times going to go? None of them are going to. People aren't going to hold on to these. They're just not, not unless they have these extraordinary deep pockets. Like we have a paper here in Pittsburgh, Susan, that is owned. We have two daily newspapers here, and they're one's owned by a family, the Block family, and the other is owned by um, a Mellon person, right. Richard Mellon Scaife. And he bought that baby and made it into a, you know, a, a big paper. And he's willing to lose money constantly. And as far as I know, he does. <laughs> he's losing money. But he kept losing it, losing it. And now his paper is, is looked at as absolutely a legitimate publication. But, of course, the editorial page and the opinion is just like it's off the wall right wing. But the editorial, I mean, the, 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 the newspaper reporting in it is, is absolutely good. Right. Well, I, you know, these things are happening all over the place. St. Louis wasn't lucky enough for that. No, but, you didn't get lucky. Um, when, when the Post-Dispatch was bought and, and, and uh, looted and, and ruined, um, most of their staff just picked up and, and with the help of philanthropists in town put together their version of the Pittsburgh City Paper. You know, they it's online, it's called The Beacon, and all the fine newspaper writers that you used to read in the Post-Dispatch are now online. Mm-hmm. Fooey. Yeah, it's, it is fooey, but I actually, 
they in a very interesting partnership because everybody's got to figure this out. They have just partnered with the local NPR talk station so that they can serve, they can share news gathering. Right, right, right. Well, there are these kinds of things going on here, too. There's uh, with our, I think our public, one of our public stations also works um, with reporters here in doing investigative reporting, and like, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand anything well, that's it's going just, on anymore. Well, it's, it's changing the idea of the subscription model, where yeah. before in the newspaper that you paid for the subscription, but there was no pretense that that covered the cost of the newspaper. The ads covered the cost of the newspaper con- together with the subscription rate. And now you, you, have to, you have to figure out a way to do that. So... Getting people to understand that if you want a newspaper, you actually have to turn to a public television or radio model and ask people to really give, subscribe. We need you to subsidize our our process. People have accepted that for public TV and public radio. Yeah, well, as Bezos himself said, uh, people have already gotten used to getting news off the Internet free. And he doesn't think that people will ever pay. I think he said that. He did say that. So, I don't know. There's got to well, be another I mean, way to monetize it. I, I don't know. I don't know. So he'll come up with something. We have to figure it out. I mean, people, you know, when once newspapers realized they'd made an error by giving away their content, they started to roll it back. So, you know, the, the major newspapers no longer are free online. Well... Uh, whatever. We'll see. I mean, you know, there's almost like I'm living a metaphor for uh, the disappearance of... Civilization as we know it. No. We're watching it. No, the daily newspaper, because I, you know, I get five newspapers delivered to my door every morning, and that, that will definitely go away I'd say in five right. years. You got me beat. I only have three. Okay. Well, it's just not going to happen. And what's interesting is when, I mean, so I, for decades, ha- I have gotten up, stumbled down the stairs, opened my front door, p- pulled all my, my papers in, and they used to be at my front door for years and years and years. You know where now they are in now? The bushes on everybody's they're level. in the bushes, out on the street. I have to now, if it's, you know, I have to put on, I used to be able to come down, you know, with like, you know, with, with a nightgown on and just grab them. I didn't, now I have to like get dressed, schlep out in the rain and the this and the that, and they're all over the place. Right. And that, that's an indication that the model is breaking down. It's breaking down. They're unable to provide the service that they that they well, did. Well, it is an indication that they don't value their product anymore. Well, I mean, you know, or when they or when they forget to put plastic sleeves on it when they throw it to you, so that you get your wet newspaper. Well, I always have my plastic sleeves. As a matter of fact, I have two sleeves when it's raining. They put well, two. Well, yes, that's the the New York Times always comes double wrapped, one inside and backwards. Yeah, you know? I know, I know, but but not the local paper. I know, and they're but delivered you know, they, by the same people. They, of course, the same person delivers all of my newspapers, which did not used to be the case, and in. In fact, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, their carriers, as far as I understand, are delivering their competitor, the Tribune Review. Right. One one person is doing all the routes and delivering everything. Unbelievable. All right. Well, that's enough of that. And the only good news about that is that at, at Christmas, there's only one envelope tucked in your newspaper. That is true, but if you then realize that that person, where you used to give them, let's say, what, twenty bucks? Yeah, if they're, I, twenty if they're was gi- my standard. Okay, right. if they're giving you five newspapers, then that's a hundred bucks. So I've been giving my guy a hundred bucks for the last three, four years. Boy, I have because it seemed only right, 
But you know what I was thinking today when I trudged out? Yeah, why? To, I'm thinking, why should I give you a hundred bucks when you're making this hard on me? I thought giving him a hundred bucks would mean I would he would continue to put my paper <laughs> on the porch. Well, he doesn't anymore. So yeah, he ain't getting a hundred bucks this Christmas. That's crazy. But I don't think I'd give him just twenty. I don't know. I get, I get grumpy about I get grumpy when I see the envelope. Uh, Merry it's Christmas. Time to give me a present. Yeah, Merry it's Christmas time to, to give you. Me a gratuity. Right, Merry Christmas to you. Which is, which give says me money. To me that it is neither a present nor a gratuity. It's it's I'm being held hostage. No, you're not. You don't have to give. Well, but yes, then look but at where, look you at where your, your newspaper goes. If but you but that's give. what I'm saying. So if I'm giving him more than probably anybody else is, and I think I was getting special treatment, I think he was saying, "Gee, thanks a lot," and blah blah blah. And now maybe he's may I don't even know who he is anymore. I think maybe other he's people, somebody else, right? Whatever. It's it, that's not stuff you want to reward at that point. I don't think. Anyway. I have to take a, another break. So we shall do that. Okay. Right now. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Welcome to today's lottery draw. And today's winning numbers are not yours, not yours, and another number that's not yours. And the final number is not yours. When it comes to having money, don't rely on luck. Brew your own coffee at home instead of buying that latte. Brown bag it to work instead of ordering it. Go to feedthepig.org for more free ideas on how to save. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for a look at the campaign finance reports. Plus, with Khalifa, Yes, David Allen Coe, The Space Pimps, and News of the Weird. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone with GPS-enabled listings at citypapermobile.com. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. All right. I'm back. So is my sister, Susan. I just have a little... uh, complaint to get off my chest for the last few days this has been particularly annoying to me it's something that happens all the time but it has to do with people on their cell phones and in this case i've just i've narrowed it down it's women by and large it's women who don't know how to modulate their voice when they're on a phone. And it's women's conversation you're invariably subjected to well, I, on I, the bus. I think, no, I, I don't think that's particular. I think it's that women's voices are because they are higher. They, no. Your ear picks them up in a more aggravating way. Oh, no, I don't know. I, you know, in a con- enclosed area like a bus, uh, it's... It, first of all, it amazes me on a psychological level how anyone would want any, all these strangers to hear their conversation. I don't, that's the part I can't even, I don't even get. And if the conversation is like sort of private stuff, that's even more mind-blowing. But if it's just dull boring nothingness you would think they wouldn't want to sub- but of course they wouldn't want to subject other people to this but they don't think for one second about having to listen to their stupid conversation oh she had that flip flops on the wrong feet <laughs> wrong feet flip flops do you believe that <laughs> See, I, I mean, I've almost gotten used to listening to, to the Tower of Babel sort of oh, effect of the world right now. I guess there are days what I'm it. What I am ceasing to do is be the eyes for everybody that is looking down and texting while they walk. 
I'm just going to let him let walk him get right run in. over. Yeah, let him get run I over. I do not move over. I don't do anything. And I and I just <laughs> and 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 they Jeez. look up startled and I say, "Watch where you're going." Really? I'm I'm tired of it. Well, I don't it's not you know, they don't bother me so much what people who are about to get run over. I don't care about them. But No, people that are about to walk right into me because oh, they have, that I'm supposed to look out for them. They're busy. That's right. They're busy. The self-centeredness it of is. It is beyond belief. But and they but, do they say excuse me when they walk right into no, you? No, no. They're they're going. They're horrified. Why wouldn't you look out for me? There are more angry women talking on cell phones walking down the sidewalk downtown than you can imagine. They're always screaming at somebody. They are always angry. Or they're at least always that's one that angry, you're and well, no, because they're screaming. Jess, am I right? Oh, yeah. Right. They're screaming at somebody. They're and I, I, I'm just, jeez, I don't know. But, I mean, but that honestly, I don't. Do you scream at people? Yes, you do all the time. But you do it for a living. You get paid to do it. But in your normal conversation, no, with people, I don't scream. Don't you have to be extremely angry and like having a fight before yeah. you're screaming? At right, people? but they're obviously people who that's how they talk to each other. They just scream at each other. Why didn't there's always these complaints? <clears throat> Why? <coughs> Why? <coughs> I'll get it out. <clears throat> Why didn't you pick me up? I, I told you. I, 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 I. These stupid little complaints, and I'm thinking, God, it's just so much noise pollution, and it's so stupid and self-centered. Yep, 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 yep. Women driving their cars. Yep, 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 yep. Women walking down the sidewalk. Yep, 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 yep. Women on the bus. God. There. I feel better. Do you? Mm Mm-hmm. Good. (coughs) Sorry. So I've been filling out my surveys again, and I feel good, too. (laughs) Well, that's good. So... Any uh, ain't any St. Louis players on suspension? Uh, no, no such luck. But <laughs> we're imploding anyway, so. No, you're not imploding. So that's incredible. But aren't you still ahead of us? Yeah, by two games. Well. And you did us a great favor because you pummeled the red. So now yes, that, we did. Thank you very much. And we both are having trouble with the stupid Cubs. What's that about? Well, I think that's what happens. I mean, these You great let up te- the intensity. <clears throat> I'm not sure, uh, but they often lose to teams, right, that they, yeah, and you think, come on, how are you losing to them? I don't know. I do not know. Um, but it's fun, isn't it? Everybody <clears throat> in St. Louis looks at me with such horror when I, you know. Say when something I positive. Of, oh, it's, I'm, I, you know, when. When I say, oh, as long as the Pirates are in first place, it's okay. Uh, Thank you. Mm. I mean, it is. um, No, here we're just going nuts and uh, really enjoying it, obviously. So, and you guys, you know, I mean, now we know how you feel a lot because you've got such a great franchise there. And well, we, it we, is. I mean, it is. <clears throat> and we've been it, wandering one in thing the that desert. All of St. Louis has that they remain, that they are able to remain proud of. They <clears throat> really love their birds. That's right, right, right. And we love our pirates. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Can I tell you one story about my weekend? Speaking of birds, uh, if it involves something funny like one pooping on you or something. Well, well, the, one bird did poop on a guest, but. Uh, but oh, that wasn't out- the funny okay. story. That was an outdoor um, wedding. This, the, this wedding was in the San Francisco <laughs> Zoo, which, just as an aside, is uh, right next to the Pacific Ocean in San Francisco, which means that it was 30 below zero. So that's just that's just to start with. It was at 5 o'clock, and there were all these women in cocktail dresses. and Freezing to death. And they were <laughs> freezing their butts off. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the story. So there we are. At this wedding, and with the, with the zebras on one side of us, and some some crazy looking you know antelope animal with you know a, it was an ibex or something. It had some crazy you know horns on it, and 
and and the bride and groom getting married in in this little you know idyllic setting behind, and they're under a canopy. It was a Jewish wedding, and the rabbi's talking, and all of a sudden the woman next to me is giggling so hard that I'm like elbowing her and telling her to shut up, and she points, she keeps pointing, and I look, and sure enough, there is a gull sitting on the rocks right behind the rabbi. And the rabbi will go, and, and, you know, and, you know, marriage is a wonderful thing. And then the the rabbi would stop and take a take a break, and the gull behind him would go, <laughs> and then the rabbi would talk and go, and, and win marriage, and then you know, and the numbers that the dates that you chosen are very fortuitous. And then there's a pause, and the gull would go. <laughs> you know what? I love that because one of the things I loved in Scotland, there were so many gulls. And they'd sit on the chimneys and have the most extraordinary conversations with each other. So they're very vocal. Oh, how cute. Oh, it was just cute. Yeah. I mean, there's no way that that bird wasn't just making fun of the rabbi or just saying, well, you know, it it's seems nighttime and this is our time in the zoo. What are you people doing around here? Well, yeah. David writes, when someone near you is yapping loudly on their phone, turn around and face them and intently listen to every word they're saying. I don't have the nerve to do that. I know. I've, I've heard that suggestion before, and it really, I mean, you know, right. I don't have the nerve to and do that. And then what happened, you should say? Yeah, stare him in the face like you're watching TV. Uh-uh. I watched one woman, he writes, texting on her phone and walking down the sidewalk, and another texting on her phone, walking up the sidewalk, and, yep, crash. They ran right into each other. I laughed, says David. Yep. Yeah, we understand that. Totally. Totally. Um, <clears throat> geez, excuse me for this voice today. I don't know. Yeah, and, one, and, the, and somebody even wrote an, a helicopter mommy even wrote a whole <laughs> essay on how the only way she could stop being a helicopter mommy was to give up her cell phone. Because, because it enables all that stuff. You can track your children. You can oh. reach them all the time. You can call them all the time. So you do. Oh, God. I'm... I don't know. It's bad. Or it's, vice versa. In the case of my daughter, the only reason I'm on the phone this morning is because she was helicoptering me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, your family does a lot of that. I mean, you stay in touch. Um, <clears throat> and I don't. I don't. I, I love not being out of touch. <clears throat> I love it. Jeez. I'd talk if I had anything to say so you could clear your throat. I can't. I don't know what's going on. It's really gone. He's gone. I didn't even have a game to watch last night, so it has nothing to do with screaming at something. Well, I, don't know I, what just, this is. I just want everybody to be totally <clears throat> impressed that I am <clears throat> here and talking to you the way I am on two minutes sleep. <laughs> well, Suze, I don't think you can make people feel that way. I don't need it. I it's, don't either. It's you have to show up and be on, or, I mean, in this case, I doubt if anyone's listening because of the way I sound. Right. Hey, see and if you... we're having such <clears throat> an interesting conversation. All right. See if you know the answer to this. Right. Which four states were sovereign countries before joining the United States? Um... <clears throat> Mm, well, it's do they have to be a sovereign country or part of a sovereign country? They have I to... mean, like Texas was part of Mexico. Don't be giving me, for instances, and this is and that. I said, what states were sovereign countries? There were four states. Well, I, I, see, I get, I'm going to nitpick this because there was, there was, there was, there's a, there's a city in Missouri that was a sovereign country. It's called. I didn't say city. I said <laughs> what states. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know any? Um, which cities? Were Not cities, states. I mean, states. We're sovereign countries, all of their own. You see, I know I'm having trouble with this question. I'm thinking of, like, the Louisiana Purchase, but that was part of another country. Right. Um, see, Canada's not a state. Hawaii? Yes. Wasn't uh, that a, that had a king and a queen? Right. Okay, Hawaii, that's one. I mean, does Alaska count? But it wasn't within its borders, and those were just little Inuit places. Uh, okay, she didn't get it. 
Here's the here's the one that f- will freak you out. Vermont. Oh, well, that sort of makes sense. They still think they are a sovereign nation. I don't know about that. Vermont. Also, yes, Texas. It was the Republic of, of Texas. Texas. Yeah. Also, the Republic of California. Oh, well, same thing. Okay. These right. things that were chiseled <clears throat> off of Mexico. <clears throat> Well, at least I got Hawaii. I got two out of the four. You got one because you didn't really say Texas. I said Texas in Valley speak. It ended in a question. Texas? (laughs) All right. Well, I think that's it. I got nothing. I got nothing. So I hope you have a wonderful time in... Green Bay. I, there, we are very, 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 very happy to be here. It's nice and quiet and relaxed. Yeah. And we, uh, open the, we open the windows and the air comes pouring in. It's really just wonderful. Well, you guys all enjoy each other. And um, tell those two boys not to drink so much today. <laughs> Like these old men. They are. They're like, old men now. They just and they turn just... into like like bad little adolescents. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. They 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 love each other. They and really they're having a good time. Watch. It's like it's like the only good thing I ever did in my brother's eyes was find this man to marry. <laughs> <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> and we we're all grateful to you, Susan. Yes, me too. Right. I mean, stop and think about that. When somebody, you know, in your family marries, they bring somebody into the family. And, you know, some of the people they bring in, oy, yay, yay. It's like, you know, a cat dragging in a dead animal you don't want. And there they are. And then sometimes they bring in somebody who's just wondrous. That's what Susan did. Actually, we have a pretty good record in our family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I'm sorry. I want to apologize for the sound of my voice, for the content of the programming. And I want to apologize for the sound of my voice and the fact that I was perfectly willing to sleep right through this. Yes, exactly right. We, we, we are um, sorry. Tomorrow, Chris Potter will be here. And uh, he's usually fit. And he'll have something interesting to say. He very well might. <laughs> So we'll look forward to that. And I just want to say, oh, Susan, I just got to tell you this one thing, because I was just going to say, go Bucks. That's what we call the pirates, the Bucks, like the Buccaneers. Right. And my a doctor, who I go to, was at a pirate game the other day, and the guy sitting next to him had a Cubs um, shirt on. Yes. And my, the doctor said, hey, guy, we weren't even playing the Cubs. And he said, you know, wrong shirt. And the guy with the cub shirt on said, no, no, I'm a pirate fan, but I'm dyslexic. (laughs) Buck. Isn't that good? Very good. All right, that's it. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.